All right, now that that is sufficiently in my light over here, we can get started. All right, filming in my new apartment, trying to figure it out. <laughs> you can see the car flashes going by behind me. It's wonderful, it's just great, great. <sighs> Hello everyone, I hope you're having a fantastic week. It's summer, it's hot, it's hard to bake and do anything but move in small, tiny movements. So I'm here this week with a fabulous quick recipe for you. It's a chocolate sponge cake with lots of little bits of stuff on it. It's delicious. I mean, that's all you really need to know. So I'm gonna try to get more recipes out as well as DIYs from Pinterest because I've been doing a lot of knitting tutorials lately because I'm getting ready for my classes at Michael's. Yay! So, everybody, I'm going to be doing a lot of knitting stuff, so just bear with me. It will end, I promise. I will have all of it ready for you on my website, and we are going to have a blast making lots of warm stuff for our cold Canadian winters. But for now, let's get into the Rocky Road cake, because it seemed appropriate a couple of weeks ago to make this cake in my new apartment, and I hope you enjoy it. So. And go, and go, and go. So first you'll want to take a cup and a half of self-rising flour and sift it together with two teaspoons of baking powder, four tablespoons of unsweetened cocoa powder, and a pinch of salt. Set this aside for later. Then we're going to break out the beast and add one cup of unsalted butter, softened. Beat the butter until it is pale and fluffy. Then add one and one quarter cup of superfine sugar. One little trick if you don't have superfine sugar is to throw it in a mini food processor and give it a couple of spins and it turns your regular sugar into superfine sugar. Gradually add four beaten eggs, beating well after each addition, scraping the sides as well. Then stir in the six tablespoons of buttermilk and two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Mmm, now it smells amazing. Stir in the dry ingredients at a low speed, mixing well. Then you're going to want to grease two 8 inch cake pans and divide the cake batter into each. Smooth at the top and bake in the oven for 30 to 35 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. They should be firm to the touch. Turn the cakes out on a wire rack and leave to cool. Cut small slits into the top of each sponge cake and set aside. For the filling and topping, I used a bag of caramel minis and also half a cup of mini marshmallows with three tablespoons of milk, and I put it into a pot at medium heat, stirring constantly until melted down into a sauce. I'm not sure if the recipe thinks that the marshmallows melt, but they did not. Put one sponge cake on a plate, and pour over half the melted mixture and half a cup of walnuts. Place the second cake on top, and repeat with another half a cup of walnuts and melted mixture. Sprinkle another half cup of mini marshmallows on top, and you're done! I hope you enjoyed this recipe. So hopefully this will be a fun year and I'm looking forward to all of the stuff I have pinned on my Pinterest board, DIYing the, just the crap out of everything this fall. Hit the like button if you like this video and comment below if you want to see more recipes like this. If you would like to see more knitting tutorials, recipes, DIYs, subscribe to my channel and I will see you later. Keep calm and have a cupcake. Bye bye. Is that what an intro is like? Gonna make some cake. Who's the doctor of knitting now? Ooh, ooh, that's me. That's me. Got my new background. I hope you really like it. Back, come check this out. I'm on the camera. Bye, Bye now. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. It's a chocolate sponge cake with lots of little bits of stuff on it, like Walmart. Wal Walmart. Was I really just gonna say Walmart? Oh my god.